Gravity Films. Yes, sir. We got another interview. We do. Let us know who we have here. So, it's uh, the almighty Black Old Banks, you know what I'm saying? Big Black Star, ABS 1 and 2 type shit, you feel me? Okay, okay, okay. So, what what would this be? Like, this our second interview? Or? Yeah, the other one, man, we got to do, if he can find it, we got to do a Black TV goddamn rewind on that rewind. shit. Rewind. Yeah, this nigga Steelo done lost the video. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, call me out. It's all good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we about to, this one about to be even better, though. You know what I mean? All right, so. If y'all ever want to know how I felt about Will Smith getting smacked, that, that's what that one would be definitely a, a the, little. That's how long ago that shit was. Yeah. That shit would definitely be like, if it ever come out, I don't know. If I'm famous by then, Will Smith going to hate me. <laughs> but shit, we might, that shit might not be. That might have been a blessing in disguise. Like, no, nah, Dre God was like, no, nah, bro, you don't need to. Your rapper don't even talk about Will Smith. He's going to shut you out. You know how that shit go. Nah, for sure. Niggas a blackball your ass before you even get in the dough. Don't do me like that. <laughs> so, look, before, before we started the interview. Right, right. I was asking you questions, and the questions were relationship-based. And one of the questions that I asked was, do you think a man can fall in love with a woman and not desire to have sex with other women? Nah. You say no. I said no, that shit cap. And and why, why do you feel like that? Because, you know, a lot of women will say, when you find that right one, you won't desire to have sex with other people. Like, cause you know, most girls, they'll say that they'll rather have one partner than multiple partners. And most guys will say, will ha- rather have multiple partners okay. than one partner. Right. So I think sometimes women can project their ideas onto us. Okay and their perspectives onto us because they may feel that we're built the same. But how do you feel about that? Shit, so you want like, this like a video game, my nigga, you want the beginner answer or like the intermediate answer? Shit, I mean, it's an interview, so we got some time. Shit, uh, the beginner answer is people just be saying shit and like, if you took that same ideology and applied it to them, it wouldn't make sense. So you telling me because you feel like one person for you is like solid and you got like some structure with that, that I should like be able to do the same thing cause you do it. So like, no, nah, that's like the beginning answer. Like if we took that and used it in other situations, that other person would feel like, no, nah, cause I can't do that. But why can't you? I can do it. I can't do that. But why you can't? You just told me because you can be in a relationship with one person. I should be able to do the same thing. No, it don't work like that all the time. Just because you can do it don't mean I can. You feel me? Because there's some shit that I can do that you're not going to want to do. Just with your life decisions. But the intermediate answer is this. like We come from a world that follows the frequency and follows the patterns. So like you go back to the Bible and all that stuff like that, you know, they told you it was okay to have multiple wives as long as you could take care of them and break bread and, and, and you know what I'm saying, be able to treat them all the same and not have one out of wedlock would be married to, you know what I'm saying, all of them. So, boom, that was already like a polygamous type of ideology. Then it came into, like, marriages and stuff, which made it sacred. So now you wanted to be associated with somebody because that not only solidified job, but it was like, it had multiple perks, like you was tied in the land and tied in the family. So then what they started wanting you to be married to a king or a queen or like them Chinese people to be like, no, my daughter's gonna marry this little boy that they don't even know who they're gonna be yet. But before they even grow up and make their mind up, they already putting them together. And it was held sacred to be true to one person because Back then, like, respect was serious. Like, the medieval times and shit, like, nigga, you could just, like, step on my yard wrong and we might be out there with the guillotine just because, like, I got ranked like that. Like, I ain't like how you carry that. Like, mm-hmm. so 
You know what I'm saying? And even in the Middle East, it's like that right now. Like, the the morals that they was built off of from back in the day, like, women can't even, like, show their face. And so, so, like, with that shit being so goddamn strong in their culture, like, that shapes the person's ideology. You feel me? So, like, that's where it get in the media. Like, you believe that we're, Earth is, like, flat or round? I believe that it's round. Okay. I don't believe it's flat, but because we was told all our life that it was flat, I mean, it was round. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe that it's flat, but because the, his, the, the history books and the science books tell us that it's round, right? You believe it's round. And you could kind of say that your, your mindset about it is previously kind of biased because you've been told this all your life. You feel me? For sure. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so boom. So... With generations and generations of this marriage ideal, you know what I'm saying ideal where they want you to be with one person, you know what I'm saying. It's just like, how can I really like spin it all together? I want to say, yeah, that's just how that's how certain people feel because it's like that's how we was raised to feel. That's how like the older generation was. They didn't. You didn't like for like women didn't respect other women that was having sex with multiple people. Because their mindset and ideology was framed around the structure of how the world is. Because the world put that frequency out that you need to be with one person, be married, y'all get land together, acquire shit, you you represent your husband, your husband is the strong forefront, you know what I'm saying? It was all programmed like that. Now it's to the point where like people are glorifying not just men, but women having sex with like multiple people and carrying it on the way that a man is carrying it, you know what I'm saying? And the frequency is kind of changing. Like, you think about it, even with, like, the way us as people accept people's sexual preferences, you see now they, you know what I'm saying, it's changing because the frequency is changing. So with that being said, with the uh, loving one person and stuff, like, yeah, they tell you to love one person. You know what I'm saying? And they tell you that if you with one person, you can't like other people, bro. I don't care what nobody say. If Even if y'all trying to keep y'all morals intact, if we could take them morals away and what you was raised on and how your response should be, ain't no woman going to tell me that they have like been with a man all their life and never eyed another man, bro. And with that eye comes what? The mind, you can't stop what the mind do, bro. If the mind put that image in your head, you could tell us it didn't do it, but I know when you eyed that nigga, you, you had some type of feeling, you feel me? And who knows what your brain projected, because that's what a thought is, right? So you could have thought some shit when you eyed the nigga. Like, how you, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's no way, bro. You not, nobody is not. You look at girls every day, you could love your girl, bro, but you look at another girl and she fine, bro. That whole time you did that little look, you just like, bro, if I was, you know what I'm saying, boom, boom, that's your little thought right there. So you think your girl ain't seen Chris Brown or one of them niggas, and she think you cute. You all right, nigga. I'm all right, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But we know we ain't like no supermodels, so if you fiending for me, and I'm all right, nigga. You know what I'm saying? What? Come on, bro. That's just real life shit, bro. It's like all that cap niggas be doing. And, you know, um, I think... I think we do look I think we do look at women in a more lustful way than women look at men though. You know you what I mean? Feel that way? I think I, I think, think more I think healthy men look look I think uh healthy women don't look at men as as purely lust objects. I feel like women value connection more than we do. So a woman can see that a guy looks good, but not necessarily want to sleep with them just because of that. Girls want to sleep with guys, uh, not solely based on connection, but largely based on connection. It's more like on, more, more on a mental thing? Yeah, more mental thing. I feel like because okay. women are more malleable. Okay. Meaning their ideas are less less solid. You get what I'm saying? So, mm, and, are you saying that they don't... They don't I'm saying women saying, are you're followers. Saying, you're saying it's not backed up as, as well? No, I'm saying women are followers, right? 
and women to are an easily extent, per, I don't want to I don't want to say that women are followers because just in like because we doing a podcast or radio, you know what I'm saying? Just like you know, it's a lot of women that are leaders in this. Some game women too, are like, leaders, right? But at, at the same time, if okay, I think say, that say, say we are, in a neighborhood, right? Okay. And I think I'm the shit. Right. And another nigga think they the shit. Right. And the first nigga get the second nigga knocked off. Right. Who the leader? Okay. The first nigga, right? Right. Because he got the second nigga knocked off. Right. So if we can ultimately knock off somebody whenever we want to, who the fuck is the leader? I so what it. I'm saying is, not saying like, that's what niggas is going to do. But in the back of our heads, right? Okay. We know if this girl play with us, it's easy pickings. Right. So we're ultimately the leaders. So you, based so on you physicality. Saying, so you saying because that's what that's what shit really come down to. Oh, so you saying that just because of dominance that makes you the leader in any relationship that involves a, a female? If you can dominate who if, if you're dominated something, they have to follow who's dominated. But they necessarily don't have to follow you because it's not this isn't the jungle. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you ain't a lion that could just scratch a fucking, whatever a female lion is up just because you ain't listening. Like, if we actually following, like, real fucking human rules and stuff, like, Shawty got the right to walk away from you. And honestly, like, I can't even say a woman is following you because if she around you, it's in her interest. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't tell her to do it. In the interest of her feelings. Right. Which she's following those. But the moment she cuts those off and disconnects herself from you, she never was really following you. If she get mad at you and leave, she won't follow you. That's not true. What, I what, feel what, that she, way. what she's What she's doing is she's following her emotions. But is that you? You might generate those emotions. That's what I'm saying. We generate those emotions. A strong man generates those emotions. Okay, but a strong man could also cut those emotions off and not mean? not even by his own intentions. You could be everything to somebody that you say you is, but then, like, you might go cheat or you might just be an alcoholic or you might be some other shit, and you could, like, cut that shit off. You might still be everything that you just was able to, like, charm her with, but you might still just be, like, you feel me, because of other actions. So it might... I'm saying, like, are, is she really following you? Because, like, you you don't even have to say I'm done with you. Like, if she sees something that makes her done with you, she gone. So is that still being, is that still her following you? So I don't really, I feel like they still move at their own interests, even if it, their interest involves being connected to you. And let me, let me, let me ask you this, though. Right. So in life, if we just followed our emotions all the time, where would we end up? Niggas probably been dead already. Niggas probably been okay. you know, saying some crazy shit. That's right? a valid point, but where are you going with that one? So where I'm going with it, right, is if you had to pick a leader, right, and you said, okay, I want the, I want, the, I, which would I rather have? Okay. The leader that follows their emotions or the leader that follows logic? And that be, that be like the plot twist of like every movie that involved like civilization like walking dead is like i don't know if anybody who watched that shit would your shit would you rather have like rick or would you rather have like negan like would you rather have like the governor or would you rather have like shane like it's like you know what i'm saying some niggas will let somebody go that shouldn't have been let go just because they thinking with their emotions and sometimes just doing that thinking with your emotions could could change this perspective because like let's say somebody did you dirty one time you feel me but like you could really get them but you just like nah i'm gonna let bro pass or like i'm gonna let whatever just happened just shape and then they end up feeling bad about the shit and because you came at it in such a cool little way, they might change their heart with you, or they might end up being cool with you, might end up getting some money with you, or y'all could end up 
making something out of this just by settling the shit. But like, if you got somebody that mindset is like, bro, no, nah, you just cross me, I'm finna get at you. Then it's like, you know, this shit could be different. Or you could have somebody that could be like, I'm not gonna forgive him, but or her, but it might be logical for me to keep them around. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And they not even like playing it cool with them. They just like letting them be just because for right now it makes sense. So what you so so ultimately what are you saying? Ultimately what I'm saying is like It's beneficial to have I feel somebody like, that's logical. I feel like if you ask, if you trying to figure out, is it better for a girl to think off of emotions or off of logic? No, no, no. That's oh. not. I'm not asking. Is it better for a girl to think off of emotions or think logically? Because I don't think that's realistic. They always going. You know, their emotions, their emotions, in a way, rule them. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen a girl like on her period, and she just be crying for no reason? Right. Like she don't even know. She she don't even know why she's crying, but she just crying. But She's like, damn. I feel like, bro, if we was bleeding for like a week, I I feel like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro, bleeding if, for a week, bro, like that shit kind of od. Like, if you was to just bleed for a week right now, bro, you would probably start crying. For sure, I would be end up. I would be a girl, so of course I would. No, nah, like let's just say you was a man and you just bled for a week for no reason. Let's say you ain't know it was like. Let's say God was just playing with you and boom, just say, hey, I'm going to let you see how I feel to bleed for a week. But you don't know that, though. You just started bleeding for a week. You think you about to die, bro. You start crying. You start having, like, thoughts like, damn, like, bro, it's been a week of me bleeding, bro. Like, if you ain't went to the hospital yet, you definitely going to be crying or, or in some type of depressive state to be bleeding and you can't stop it, bro. That shit different. Nah, for sure. I mean, you know, if... I had my hormones change and I was bleeding for a week and I couldn't control my emotions. Of course, you know. But do you I think that's emotional. being emotional? That's not, that's all I'm coming. I'm not to looking you, at it as a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm no, not. Looking. I'm not saying it's bad, but do you think? Do you think it's it's being emotional? Like, I feel like that's anybody rational emotion. I think being emotional is being like. No matter what, you always like lashing out or like very expressive or like gotta be super sad over the minuscule things. But I feel like, I feel like that's pretty rational to be in a state if you bleeding. Like if you would do it too, I don't think it's emotional. You see what I'm saying? Like okay, so let's say like I smack your hand. I, 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 I smack agree, somebody I else's agree hand. With, I agree with you, right? And you and like you started screaming and crying. But they was like, damn, bro, you just smacked my hand. But I shot both of y'all in the foot, and y'all both screaming. That's rational as fuck. So I don't think no, you being so, emotional. You so, know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm, it's rational to have those feelings, right? Which, which, doesn't make, which makes it not emotional no more because you're not... No, I get what yeah. you're saying. What, what, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what makes it emotional is how you react to how you feel. So as okay. a man... You know, you can feel a certain way, but as men, we have to have discipline. So discipline means doing something regardless of how you feel. Okay. You know what I mean? And we are better capable of doing that because, you know, we've been conditioned to do that. And, mm, you know what I'm saying? By the frequency. We, yeah. We've been just been, you know, con- it's, it's conditioning. And I, and I feel like a lot of stuff that women care about, we don't care about. No, we don't. You, like you ever had a girl tell you, be like, you know, men, men just, you know, they have all these mental health problems because they had to bottle up all their emotions for their whole life. They had people tell them to yeah. suck it up and shit. And like I had girls tell me that shit, and I'd be like, it wasn't really like that. Like we just didn't have those emotions that y'all had. Like it wasn't like at least for me, I never. Okay. You know, I had I had I had my dad or my brother, my big brother, tell me like, "Nigga, stop bitching this shit." And you know what I'm saying? Suck, <laughs> suck that shit up. Yeah. But we never took it as like it's hurting us. You know what I'm right. saying? To suck it up, we like, oh, right. This is what we're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? But why? And, and a lot of times, a lot of times, the emotions that they have towards certain stuff, we just don't have it. Like you ever see like 
You ever see, like, girls get scared of certain shit? Yeah. And you be like, like, just pick, like, just, like, a girl will be, be they'll, they'll be nervous about, like, what they wearing or something, right? Right. And they don't know what to fucking pick. And okay. they'll be like, I don't know what to pick. Like, they right. get all crazy. And we be like, bitch, just wear the fucking black dress. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we right. not even, us, we wouldn't even have that emotion. But, but this is where, see, I like having these conversations, bro, because, like, it, it it always get deeper, bro. It's it's like my favorite word of the day is I guess like it's gonna be is frequency, bro, mm-hmm. because it's the frequency. For example, like you you saying like as men we don't have that emotion, but we do. It's just that the world programs us to turn it off. I don't think I don't think the world programs us to turn it off. I you think just certain like because if no, you, if your your of your dad and your granddad and your great granddad and your great great granddad, if all of them was taught this way, like as a youngin, like that emotional shit for that shit even start, because think about the person that didn't have a father in their life, and then they emotional as fuck, and you'd be like, you got bitch tendencies. Well, he had his mom in his life, his sister. His grandma, his cousins, won't know men around the family. Mm-hmm. So all them things that you say you don't got, he got. Because but, listen, listen. It wasn't But what off. I'm saying is, if he was raised, right, in a society or, or in, didn't have experienced trauma, right? Because trauma changes all of us. Trauma okay. rewires us. How you feel about people that say they have trauma just from not having their parents around? I mean that's I understand. I mean it's understandable for sure. I think trauma is all about your outlook on the experience, right? Right, because trauma can because anything can be traumatic. Anything can be traumatic. It's about it's about the importance that you put on that experience, right? Okay. So like I've had traumatic experiences where, you know, my mom would be like, "Dang, I didn't know you felt like that." Like. I didn't know that's that experience was traumatic for you, but right. that shit was like super traumatic for me. And then I've been shot at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My brother got shot, my brother died right. and shit like that. And you know, I mean, certain certain things are shocking, but I don't think any any experience I've had since then has hurt me more than that experience I had when I was a kid. Okay. And that's all because of my outlook. I have foundational responses, stress responses that I go to once something stressful happens. So say like, say like, um, I didn't have any money, right? All right. Now, when, when I didn't know what to do in the instance that I didn't have any money, I probably was self-destruct. Okay. But since I already have a built-in mentality to where if I get broke, I'm like, all right, I just got to stay calm. I got a goddamn shit. Do a video sale. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hit up some people. Get back right. And eventually, I'm going to get on my toes. I just got to stay calm and stay moving. Right? That's immediately what I go to. If somebody doesn't have that immediate immediate, uh, disposition to go to, then that's when they will experience trauma because they won't know how to process that experience in a positive manner. All right. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is trauma definitely rewires us because it builds a foundation of negativity that or negativity or just a different foundation. It doesn't necessarily have to be negative. It could be a different foundation. So you're saying, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I, I know you're saying that, but so you're saying like trauma is necessary. No, I don't. I don't think trauma is necessary at all. I think what is necessary is hardship, and what also is necessary is we talking about. We talking about as far as like the molding of being a man, right? Or what are we talking? I about? mean, yeah. In terms of the molding of being a man, I think. See, this is the thing. Where when men start to shoot and kill each other and do drugs and shit, okay. that become that comes from trauma. When there isn't somebody else in the background that helps you process those emotions, cause that so like say I scrape my knee right, right, and I start crying, right, 
or like I get punched in the face and I start like crying. As a kid, right? As a kid, okay. right? And I go home and I'm crying. And I have nobody to say, hey, I got punched in the face. But I go home and I, and I get punched in the face and my dad is like, oh, you'll be fine in a couple of days. You know, um, just go in there, put the ice on your face and you'll be fine. Don't worry about what kids say at school. Everybody gets in fights. You'll be fine. Okay. They'll get in fights. And you, you take that from somebody that you look up to, somebody that you hold in high regard like your dad, you're going to have that mental fortitude and be like, you know what? I am fine. So the next time you get into a fight, that's automatically what you go to now. But the people that are experienced trauma and aren't able to heal from their trauma are people that didn't have that, that um, place to go to. They didn't have that person to put that in them. Okay. Uh, I mean, my dad wanted my life to, like, goddamn. You feel me? Like, when I went through shit, I ain't had nobody to talk to. But I just be feeling like, I. what I was saying earlier, too, as far as, like, people that don't be having other people in their life, it kind of be weird to me. Because, like, I was raised in a, like, crib full of all girls. You feel me? And that shit ain't, like, mold me to like be no different but we talking about like the programming and the wiring and like trauma and shit and I feel like if if you in the house with no dad I feel like you can still like make it and then like even if you in the house with a dad you feel me like yo yo your first line of like somebody that you gonna meet to mold you that they still could be wrong too like your parents can mold you to be a very bad person that's the fact you know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like trauma kind of do, like, help. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, for example, like, I I ain't even like your response as far as, like, what the dad would say. Because, like, personally, me, like, with my kids, like, I only got one. But, like, if I had a son, bro, and a nigga told me, like, bro, punch them, bro, like, the next day, you going to have to go punch him back. <laughs> like... And I don't know if that would mold him into being like. Well, you know, I left aggressive. I left out that part because I'm I'm uh. What I was thinking was he fought back. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you won't saying it like bro got punched. And he just ran in the house like I got punched. Yeah, yeah. That's how I, I was saying. I won't. I won't saying. I won't okay, saying it okay. like that. I was saying like you know he got in a fight and he lost, but he got some hits in, but he lost. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. That's how I was saying it. Of course, I would tell my son like, look, you know. um, you lost. You got punched in the face, and the next time, you know, you have to defend yourself. That's yeah. what a man does. See, a man, like, de- yeah. a man, a man defends himself, and whether you lose the fight or not, you have to defend yourself because right. you have to learn how to defend your wife when you get older. Okay, boom. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. There's honor in losing. Yeah. There's no honor in running away. Nah. But people will tell you Especially otherwise, Especially when you got to protect somebody. People will tell you otherwise, though. A lot of selfish people will run away. Like, referring to what you're saying. What, you talking about when they protecting someone? Yeah. Yeah, I never do that. Like, I done been in situations where niggas tried to rob my homeboy and I popped their ass. Yeah. I could put this on camera because, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man. I ain't here to talk about I might take this that. out. But... Yeah, like I'ma always go. You know what I'm saying? I'ma always go for mine. Right. Um, and because it, in, in the past, it's been times where I did it and I didn't like the feeling I got from it. You know what I mean? So like this is when I was younger, younger, and I was like, I don't, ever, I don't ever want to feel that feeling again. So now it's like, oh, I'm gonna go. If I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out honorable. Okay. So you saying? So you saying? Cause it's like some places we could take this conversation, but so you saying with that situation though, got down, run that shit back to like, cause you rap too, run that shit back to like being a rapper though, right? So like you a rapper and nigga come up to you and it's like, yo, let me see what you about type shit. Well, not like that, but you know, like you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't really be on like that tough rapping shit. So I can't really put you in that light. But let's just say, on the other side of the spectrum, like, 
nigga thought you won't like that. And the nigga was just like, run your shit. Just because, like, I know you rap. I know what you rap about. Nah, nigga, I ain't thinking you on shit. Mm-hmm. Nigga, run that shit. So, like. Nah, I done got, I done got robbed before. So, like, you ain't going to try to haul ass? I, when it getting robbed? Yeah, like, you not going to try to I get never, you, I, you when I got robbed, the, the, I'm going to tell you what happened. <laughs> we might have to take this off. So, you know what I'm saying? Nigga was mad about a video. Okay. And, um, so, you know what I'm saying? He was trying to get his money back. I'm like, nigga, you ain't getting your money back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, I'm going to fix you when I see you, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, do what you got to do. And shit, right? So... I was shooting a video and this niggas, mind you, um, I don't know why, I don't know why it feels like this, but whenever, whenever something crazy happens, I feel like it goes in slow motion. Yeah. You ever feel like that? Yeah. Like whenever, you, whenever it go, real cra- slow. it go real slow, you like, oh shit. So I'm, I'm getting ready to, cause I got, I got my camera on the nigga car. So I'm about to do like a, a scene. Where he driving and he rapping yeah. and shit, right? So, goddamn, nigga pull up. Mind you, I'm seeing, I got my strap. I already see the niggas. So, I put my strap in my pocket, right? Yeah. When I put my strap in my pocket, I hop out the whip. They hopped out the whip. Three niggas deep. One with a chopper. No, like, it's like two choppers. One, like, one goddamn pistol, yeah. right? So, a nigga like... I'm fucking. I don't know why, like, but nigga, nigga, like, oh, you, you was talking all that gangster shit, and I'm like, nigga, I gave you your video, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like popping shit for some yeah. reason. So he like, nigga, I'll smoke you right now. I was like, all right, nigga, you what you want? Did you want your money back, nigga? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I ain't. Did I run? No. You can't run from that. What the fuck? I'm gonna run to. Yeah, I said you can't run from that. But I'm saying like I don't know. It's been situations. I didn't ran. I didn't ran from situations like twenty niggas tried to jump me, and I was out of that bitch. Well, I got jumped by forty niggas, and for some reason, my ass like tried to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I started off as a one on one, and this some high school shit. But I ain't gonna bring it up. But you know, see, what I'm I didn't see. My thing is right. I didn't. I didn't have shit start off one on one on one. And niggas can remember this, like, because I used to get in fights all the time on my neighborhood. Right. I didn't have some shit start on one on one. Like, then you start beating the nigga up. Yeah. Right? And then, the, the, then they niggas jump in. So I didn't got, I didn't got jumped three times. Yeah, bro. I'm talking about. Niggas be knowing, bro. Sometimes, and that's like the trauma that I feel like niggas need too, because like, when I got jumped, bro, like. I've always been a big nigga, bro. So, like, i always been fighting and, like, you know what I'm saying? Not giving a fuck. Because I'm like, nigga, I'm a big nigga, bro. I just I don't give a fuck. So, like, yeah, bro. Like, I, I went out somebody else's hood. We was in high school. So, like, niggas who know this story know what I'm talking about. But I ain't going to say whatever. Poopy boo like that. But, yeah, bro. So, I went with, like, six niggas to this little house party and shit. And this is, like, when the snapbacks was, like, going crazy and shit. So, uh... Get up in a party or whatever, in somebody house, or whatever. I'm getting a ride and shit, smacking on the bitch ass, having a good time. Like some niggas walk up to me and like take my snap back off my head. So like, <laughs> why did they do that? I don't know, but it's dark. <laughs> you're not Norfolk. It, yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 nigga it's shit. a Norfolk nigga shit. Bro. I went to Booker T, bro. So like, I, like I stayed right why next to Booker Why the fuck they T. do that? Yeah, so bro, goddamn, goddamn, was like. I ain't immediately, bro, I didn't play. Bro, I ain't even gonna tell y'all what hood I was out, bro. So, like, immediately, like, I didn't play, bro. So, like... You just you just popped the nigga? No, nah, because it was so deep that, like, you when bro really did it, I seen him, but they was, like, already moving along, like, through the crowd. So, like, once I got Charlie, because it happened so quick, she was still twerking on me, you feel me? Like, because I'm on the wall. Like, uh-huh. she twerking on me, like, niggas, whoop. Like over the over somebody's shoulder, like whoop! I seen them walking. Like I'm like, oh shit! So she still them like, nah, get off me! So like, I'm looking for the light switch, bro. I'm like, yo, I'm finna turn this light on, and now I'm gonna say what I gotta say. It is what it is, but I turn light on, bro. I said, whoever got my hat, meet me outside, nigga. Got them, came outside, bro. Hit me from the back of the head, boom. 
Boy, pieced his ass up. Boom, boom, boom. Got there, knocked him on the ground and shit. So you pieced him up? Yeah, no, for real. I knocked him on the ground, bro. Like, this really dead ass how it happened. Knocked him on the ground, right? I'm talking. See, you know what's funny? I'm talking my I shit, like, bro. I feel like we the niggas that niggas who in the spec can fight. Yeah, no, nah, bro. Yeah, so I'm talking, my, I'm talking my shit, bro, like a dummy. Like, I knew I was in somebody's hood, but we in high school, and I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. these, these young niggas not on that tight time. Like, I'm feeling because, like, I'm still in high school, so I'm like, this a high school party. I'm like, these niggas ain't about to, you feel me? Like, ain't nobody really about to do no shit. I ain't expect, like, this was like ninth grade, so like, I just like jumping into reality for real. Like, I'm, I'm like, these niggas ain't finna do shit. Like, fight, get the fuck up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Boom, bro, I get hit in the back of the head with a brick. I knew it was a brick, cause I heard it hit my skull, but that's just like clunk. Got there, next thing you know, bro, three, four niggas coming up. Then like, I'm seeing niggas coming out the crib. Like, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas what, know. So would you crowd up? No, nah, bro. I fought for a minute, bro. They, they took me down. Like, niggas was grabbing Also, oh, when you got hit with a brick, you ain't fall. No, nah, bro. <laughs> I, bro I, I said, <laughs> Hard stumbled, head, turned head. around. Like, yo, <laughs> they hit me with a brick. I got to stay up. <laughs> like, I got to stay yeah. up. I got hit with a brick, dog. Like, head, I got to stay up, bro. Because, like, I got hit. And in my mind, I'm leaning down after I got hit. And I'm like... Gang, I know this some type of brick. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, nah. like turned around type shit. I was I'm like, no, nah, but that shit, uh uh-uh. uh. Boom, yeah, but they got to grabbing me and shit. And once they finally got me to the ground, motherfucking, I could like see like the niggas' shoes that I was with, and they like all on the on the side, like watching. Oh man. So I'm like, bruh, like that shit really taught me a real lesson, bro. Like, it really did. So, so did they stay your friends out there? Fuck no. Yeah. All them niggas bitches. See, and my they, heart and too, all them my, niggas... see, my heart too big, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, I done had a situation. I done had two It was one situation where I was... Me and me and um a nigga from my neighborhood, we used to we used to beef. Like, I went, like we were so young, I wouldn't even call it a beef. But, I mean, to us it was a beef. Because every time we seen each other... We literally lived, like, down the street from each other. But every time we seen each other, we fight. Right. So one time I seen him out of the neighborhood and his mom called the police on me. So we get to the end of the street. It's like eight cop cars at the end of the street. I'm like, damn, like, that's crazy. So a couple of days later, because he thought me and my brother was trying to jump him. I'm like, how the fuck are we trying to jump him? Like, you in front of your house, we cross the street. Anyways, a couple of days later at the high school, we see some of his homeboys. So I'm walking, I'm walking away. This is after school. I think I went to my sister volleyball game. So this is like 5 p.m. This is after school already let out, right? Right. So <clears throat> I see one of the niggas, me and one of the niggas start fighting. Boom. I'm getting beat up. I'm like, I'm getting fucked up, right? Whole time, I'm thinking I'm fighting one nigga. I'm fighting two. That's why I'm getting fucked up. <laughs> I didn't know that. That nigga said he didn't know. So we get all the fight, get all the way to the street. Goddamn. I like, I'm squaring up. I pop the nigga. Boom. I fall to the ground. But he fall to the ground too. Pop him again. Boom. And then like niggas niggas come up. You know what I'm saying? And they start the fight and shit. Cause we all the way in the streets so with cars is riding, riding past. Oh shit, okay. So after that, right, I didn't I didn't realize until like a couple days later. Yeah. I was fighting two niggas and my homeboy was there and he didn't jump in. And a year before that, what, was it a year before? No, a year after that, I got jumped out the, at the basketball court out my neighborhood. Damn. And the same nigga ain't jumping. For real? And you still stay friends with him? I still stay friends with him. Sure. Yeah, my heart too big, bro. Nah, because why you do that? It's because I knew he won't like that. That's understandable, bro, but you got to at least jump in, bro. <clears throat> Yeah, I you just gotta at least like push a nigga off. You know, bro. Uh, at least try to uh, at I don't least even act care. like you, you about not to gonna fight. throw no swings, bro, and be like, "Yo, y'all just get off my man's Like it's over, or it's over. Like at least like I'm not gonna respect I re- that. I shit, respect that. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna be like that's my nigga, but I'm gonna be like, yeah, bro. At, at least you try to yeah, yeah. To do something, bro. But for you to just sit there and like watch him be like, damn, like you said, he was scared. I was scared, bro. I said, wow. Like every that's fight I got in, every too. fight I got into, I was scared. That's how they kicked it to me too, cause bro, like the second part of that story, bro, is like I got up right, and then I saw. I tell you, I got banked twice. So mm-hmm. I'm saying, niggas who know the story know the story like all the way through. Like I was walking out of the hood, bro, 
And goddamn, nigga come up to me like, yo, next thing you know, bro, I look past the gate. It's like walking. It's like, it's like left for dead, bro. You know how the zombie used to run on that shit? Oh, my God. They come and run that corner again. Out of the dark. Y'all the dark. They like, hey, yo. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, bro, and I don't give a fuck to tell this story. I'm like, bro, what the fuck, bro? And I ain't never told this shit. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Nigga was like, hey, you made my nigga bleed. It was like, no, nah, bro, we ain't rocking with that. We ain't jacking with that, bro. Like, you made one of our niggas bleed, bro. So then I'm like, man, what the fuck? You like, <laughs> so fuck, I said, man. bro, these I'm first, to go home. Like, the first two niggas, I said, bro, these first two punches going to have to be everything I got, bro. I hit the niggas so hard, bro. I ain't dropping, but he stumbled. And then the rest of the niggas just came and got me again, bro. So once again, these niggas had went from the first incident of me getting banked and had walked over here. So one of the, I guess they was part of the set or whatever. One of the OGs that stopped the shit. He was like, uh-huh. bro, like, you know what I'm saying? They didn't jump you twice and you still like getting up. And it was like, bro, they ain't doing shit. And like on some real nigga shit, he was like, bro, but I can't stop them from getting on your ass, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do what you gotta do, move around. I said, bro, I fuck with you for that, bro. Cause you know what I'm saying? Niggas could have really like just, you know what I'm saying? It was just too many niggas, bro. Just like, I couldn't do shit. So. <laughs> I'm goddamn walking back, bro. I'm walking back, bro. The, I'm walking. Six niggas that watched me get banked twice gonna come out around the cut, and they like, damn, bro, you good? Like, we about to walk back with you, bro. Like, you straight, bro? Like, damn, bro, I couldn't jump in that, bro, cause like, I ain't want, I ain't want them to start like beefing with us type shit. Like, we just came out there to fuck with the hoes, we do like that. I oh, said, bro, I'm about to get banked again, bro. They say, why? Wow, what you talking about? I said, because y'all don't get the fuck away from my face, bro. I'm about to fight all y'all, bro. Y'all gonna have to jump me too. Cause like, bro, like y'all like- Was you fucked up? No, nah, bro, I won't fucked up. It's just like my clothes was ripped. So I, but like, that's what I'm saying, bro. I got up twice, bro. I'm a big nigga, bro. Like I was still 6'1". And I won't like, I'm 260 now, but like, bro, I was at least like 245, bro. And I'm a big nigga, bro. I'm 6'1", 245, and I play football. So it's like, I'm, I'm getting up, bro. I'm nigga walking. Had a str- nigga had a scrumph. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bro. And I wrestled and, bro, like, I kickboxed when I was little, bro. Like, I always been, like, on some physical shit, bro. So it was like, I won't worry about it. So it was like, bro, I was ready to fight them, too. And I was like, bro, if y'all don't get away from me, bro. Y'all gonna have to bank me, too. Because, like, it ain't nowhere in hell, bro. So they, they moved around, bro. But, yeah. like, you know, obviously they ain't want to fight me, bro. Because, look, I would... Boy, I'm talking about, and now them niggas still hoes now, and they be funny too, cause like they be trying to act gangster. Boy, boy, <laughs> boy, 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 boy. Yes, but you know, bro. you know what's funny? You know be a nigga, ca- hard, you know a nigga bro. character from younger. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, like, you know, like certain shit that happened out my neighborhood. You know, like certain niggas like didn't like me, and you know, the whole side of the neighborhood ain't really. Fought with me, but they knew. Okay. Like, they knew from younger, like, oh yeah, that nigga, that nigga Steven ain't no bitch. Like, don't, don't get me wrong though, some niggas do change. I don't know how they do it because, like, I didn't know a couple you niggas think so? that was, yeah, bro. Because <laughs> I don't know, I didn't know a couple niggas that like was like real lot bitches. Like when we was little, like we used to like beat on up on, like you know what I'm saying. All that shit fights. You know who won, like, niggas know who won these fights and all this shit, bro. Like, uh-huh. anytime some shit happen, and then, like, they grow up, and then somehow they be on this savage shit, catching bodies, they in jail and shit. I'm like, For real? Yeah, I be like, damn, I mean, bro, bro changed up. Like, I be talking to my niggas like, bro, you see, yada, yada, bro, he killed somebody. I'm like, bro? Tomorrow, bro, he was, yeah. Sound like <laughs> shit. He was tired of getting, maybe he was tired of getting fucked I up. I mean, but that can still... Like you said, trauma be molding you. That could have molded you into being yeah. that type of nigga. You feel me? Like, yeah. that could have put you in that place. Like, he could have got his... Like, okay, my nigga Trey ain't here, but I went to Florida one time when I turned 19. And I, I, once I got there and became an adult, I really, like, lost my mind with, like, going places by myself. So I would, like, uh-huh. go to New York by myself. Like, uh, if I had to want to go see a bitch or something, like, I'm 19, like, shit, I'm about to go to this bitch state. Like, I... I be doing this sometimes, right? Cause I be traveling the fucking world. So I go out of state type shit. So I was like, my bro was like, yo, come to Tampa, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it, bro. You going everywhere else? So I'm like, fuck it. I go to Tampa, bro. Goddamn, he got this roommate. And him and his roommate was cool as a bitch, bro. So I'm staying over there at day crib and shit. We get to talking. We get to drinking and shit. 
Nigga end up teeing up on me, bro. And I know I'm staying over there. Like, I just got off the goddamn plane. I'm staying over there, bro. Like, I ain't got, I ain't getting no rental car, none of that shit. We drinking. Nigga had brought some ugly ass bitch over there, right? <laughs> some ugly ass bitch. Like, look, anybody that know me, I'll tell y'all, bro. Like, if you a female, I'm never going to shake your hand, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, respectfully, like, I'm going to give you a hug. Now, like, you a dyke, like, this were the rule of plot, like, I'm going to just, like, nod at you type shit. It ain't nothing wrong with it, but it is it, what it is, you feel me? Because I, sure. I ain't got to dap you up, dog. <laughs> it, I ain't about to hug you, you feel me? It's just some shit my grandpa, you know what I'm saying? You don't dap up women, or do the handshake shit with them. So, look, you a dyke, you know, I ain't about to, unless you want to hug, or, you know what I'm saying? But I don't even really want to hug you because you, you feel me? But the bitch was so ugly that I ain't even want to, like, hug her type shit. So I'm like, damn, uh, bro, like, shawty, bro, ugly like that. So then I'm on the phone talking to a little FaceTime, talking to a little shawty, right? Bro was drunk. He was like, bro, that bitch ugly as shit. Now she won't. And I was like, bro, like, I don't know you drunk, but, like, you don't know. You don't see what you looking at over here, like, across the, I'm looking at across this table. So, like, bro got mad, teed up. Oh, I'm going to show you how a South Florida nigga do it. Woody woo like that. I'm going to show you how this and how that do, bro. Nigga fucked around and pulled two knives on my ass, bro. And tried to like really do me. Now, bro, he, I, tr he tried to really stab you. Bro, he tried to really stab me, bro. Got I came so look, I ran outside, and then when I ran outside, I got into the street. So, bro, outside with the two knives on the street, bro, he just charged at me, bro. I slid to the left, and I kid you right, bro. The story is no cap, bro. And like, this shit crazy, bro. I I slid to the left, right. And I told y'all I kickboxed, bro. I swept the nigga, bro. Like, as he was charging at me, bro, swept him off his feet, bro. Like, huh, like just took him. So he falls on his face, bro. I kicked both the knives out his hand, bro. And I just, like, as he trying to get up like this, mm -hmm. whole foot cross his shit, bro. Knocked him out of conscious on the goddamn floor. Mm. Tight shit. And with that being said, like, that shit just, that shit... Traumatic experiences like that, bro, kind of, like, make you realize, because, bro, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, even being jumped by 40 niggas, bro, like, I'm going to just say 40 because they were saying it was more than that. I was like, bro, I thought that shit was over. You know what I'm saying? Like, being shot twice, bro, thought that shit was over. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, my homeboy, I don't know you remember when I, I posted that picture my homeboy had fell asleep behind the wheel and uh, had drove us over a cliff into a tree. Yeah, yeah, nah, you told me about that. Yeah, bro. Like, I thought I was dead, too, but like, all these traumatic experiences, like, really molded me into the person I am today, bro. So, like, now... Well, is I, it really trauma if if you don't change... Like, if you don't have a negative outlook on it? Yeah. You think it's trauma if you don't have a nugget? Yeah, because, like, nigga, let's say you was about to drown. Uh -huh. Just because you got a positive outlook on it now, did it not make that shit traumatic? It, it, it becomes traumatic if you're now scared to go in the so pool. So you're saying if it, if, it, if, it, if it keeps attacking you later on in life, it's traumatic. Exactly. That's kind of hard, though, bro, because it's like... Think about that. We we in the age of that niggas talking about that goofy ass Jeffrey Dahmer shit, bro. Like, think about the niggas that like almost got killed, but made it. What if they got a positive outlook on that shit? Does that still mean that shit not traumatic though? It's traumatic based on based on what have what they do after it. Like, okay, so you know, you've been shot. I've right. been shot at a couple times, and shit. Right now. Um, it, it gives it gives me a sense of paranoia, so I always keep my shit on me. Okay, I go in the store with my shit. Right, you know what I'm saying. It's so you can you can you can say that's that you can say that's traumatic because shit. now it gives me a sense of paranoia. You know right. what I'm saying? But it doesn't necessarily. Are you more comfortable in situations like that now, though? And being shot at? No, like I'm saying. Okay, so I didn't been shot before, so like I'd have been in situations. Where, like, 
you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to do too much incriminating and all that shit. But like, as far as just saying, I didn't been after being shot, I didn't been in situations now that like I could have got shot again or some shit could have went on. But I was a little bit more like my heartbeat won't. You know what I'm saying? Like I won't. I was. You say you say you shot first. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like, not even that. I'm yeah. saying what I'm just saying. I'm trying to say without saying, but basically. I'm saying I was more comfortable in those situations, like, uh, For sure, like, a, like, a, like a gun don't scare me as bad as it did. Like I didn't have too many talks with death, like on some real shit. Like I didn't have too many talks with death. Like too many. All right, this is my time. I didn't make peace with myself. I didn't survive a lot of shit, so I didn't have too many talks with death to like really be scared no more. So now I'd be like, I didn't got shot twice, bro. Like. And I didn't been in some situations where I almost didn't got shot or it could have went down or who de woo. I ain't know who was gonna make it out type shit. And I was just like, bro, like if you gonna shoot me, nigga, shoot me. Like if you got the drop on me, like I I don't be scared no more. Like I didn't talk to a nigga one time. I was like, bro, you not even about to do this. You know what I'm saying? And you said you, say you talked to a nigga one like, time. Like like bro had me. And I was like, you not even about to do this, bro. Like you not. Like you not even like that. Not even on no funny shit. I oh, didn't. he tried to rob you? Or yeah, he... yeah. But, like, a young nigga, bro, tried to get me. But I said, you not even about to do this, bro. Like, you not even like that. You not even about to do that. Like, I could tell he didn't want to do it. He was shaking. Yeah. Like, bro, you not even about to do this. Now, if if I had never That's been, not every situation, though. I'm saying, but if I, had never, if I had never been shot before, I don't think even if... Because you right. If, if he was somebody that I knew was going to really, like, blow me type shit, I probably would have reacted to the situation different. But I still... Was calm though. You feel me? I feel like if I had not got oh, shot. Oh no, for sure. It definitely. I feel like makes if I wouldn't have got shot before, and bro, that was shaking and shit, trying to rob me, would have pulled up. I would have been like, you know what I'm saying? No, it definitely makes you calm. I mean, it's funny that you say that, right? Because the times where, like, the time when I almost got jumped by twenty niggas, right, and shit. I've been in so many fights. Like, I didn't had that walk. Like, you ever? You ever had that walk where you know, all right, I'm about to go fight this nigga, right? Right, yeah. And your heart beating like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. before you get there. Before that, you yeah. get there. It's like that walk. Like, I used to walk from my crib to, like, they had some, oh, you know about Dunedin. Yeah. They had those Wellington apartments okay. and shit, and they had a field right next to Wellington apartments. Right. So I used to walk from my crib to the Wellington apartments to fight. There's, there's one nigga named Jamonte, and on that walk, you get that feeling like, Damn, like I'm scared as a bitch, but I can't. You I'm not about to turn. About to I'm not about to turn back. Yeah. But like, you know what I'm saying? So in the moment, I I done been through that situation a lot of times. So in the moment when it's twenty niggas, I come down. I come down the steps, right? In these apartments, I come down the steps. Boom. When I come down the steps, my homeboy like, yo, he's not really my homeboy, but. I just want to point something out to you, too. It really was crazy, like, how niggas moved when we was younger. What you mean? Like, these numbers. What you mean, these numbers? Like, I don't care what... Like, 20 niggas, 40 niggas? I don't care what gang you in, bro. Y'all niggas is not all in one place like that. At one time, on, like, some catching a nigga type shit, like... Bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm bro. saying, like, bro. It, it might was be serious. Three, it might be three, four niggas, bro. But like, as a grown, I'm saying, as a grown man, you might, you might, some static jump off. It might be three, four niggas at at most. Maybe five, some outland, outlandish shit. It might be seven, eight niggas, bro. But like, when we was younger, bro. Everybody was just deep. So deep. it's like, bro, like these irrational ass numbers, bro. And it be like that because it's like you a kid, bro. Everybody just together. Everybody, you know what I'm saying. You had so many niggas you fuck with, like it, crazy, bro. Talking about twenty niggas, forty niggas, niggas you can't even count. You can't even give an accurate count, bro. Just That's what like, I'm saying. It's crazy because, like how you said, the niggas came out the shadows. I'm coming down. I'm coming down the steps, right? Nigga, I'm with like, yo, look, yo, look behind you. Like, I'm like, what? I look behind me. I turn. Twenty niggas come out the dark. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Cause my homeboy, my homeboy, well, and my homeboy, my brother had just jumped the nigga that um 
We gonna talk about this off of air. Yeah, this nigga. About the specifics. Yeah, but they had, they had, they had just jumped the nigga that you know what I'm saying. It was cool with them, right? Because that nigga had jumped in my car at at the mall, okay. and we got fighting. So they seen the nigga and they jumped him, and they thought that I told them to jump him, but <laughs> I never told, I never told them to jump him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never, I was not, I was not cool with that. Right. Cause like, damn, when he, these niggas deep, so when they see me or see any of us. You know what I'm saying? They gonna want it. They gonna want. You know what I'm saying? That won't smart. Yeah. So I turn around and nigga like, "What's up?" I'm like, "What's up?" <laughs> I'm like, "Mind you, I'm calm as shit." I'm like, "What's up? What's good?" You know what I'm saying? So I start walking back up the steps. Right? They say, "What?" One of the niggas, like they leader, like, "Y'all ain't gonna do nothing." So I just feel a punch out of the dark. Just ima- imagine a punch coming out of the dark, hitting the light and hitting your face. Boom. Once I hit the, once I feel the punch, I get the, I get the running. You know, I'm gone. I try to run to my car first. I realize, oh, that's not a good place to run. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I, I get the fleeing. I get the, bro, it's 20 niggas, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and how I say, I'm like, damn, why did I run? You know what I'm saying? But I feel like that, that that's just an experience that I'm going to take with me to, you know, to make me stronger, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So, all but the, all those situations definitely do make you stronger though. Yeah, but and what I'm what I was saying by that is in that situation I was calm. Okay. I was calm as shit. I was like, "What's up?" Like literally like, "What's up?" Like it was nothing. Right. Like in my head I'm like, "Oh shit." Yeah. But in my in my body and my stance I'm like, yeah, so I didn't. Yeah. You know how to. You know how to compose yeah. when when you went through shit. Even when I got robbed, like I knew how to compose myself. Right. You know what I'm saying. I wasn't like I wasn't gonna beg nigga for my life or yeah. you know what I'm saying. No shit like that. I was like, all right, shit, shit. You want this? Here, take it. You know what I'm saying. So, you know that's what those experiences definitely do mold you. They condition you. I wouldn't yeah. say it's traumatic. It's, it's definitely like a part of your conditioning. Okay. That's still traumatic, though, man. I feel like tra- trauma is deep, though. I feel like people be overusing the word trauma. Trauma is... how When I look at trauma, I look at something that you went through that every time you think about it, you want to cry. That's what I look at as, as a traumatic experience. Something that just shakes you. It shakes your ideas of yourself. It... It um, it shakes your 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 inner hard hard drive. It's just like just imagine you got a hard drive and you built all this information on the hard drive, right? And you drop that hard drive from a hundred story building. Okay. Right. right. Maybe a fifty story building. Well, it's, it's still intact. Damn. It's still intact on the outside, right? Okay. But on the inside, the components is all fucked up. Yeah. To me, that's what trauma is. So you built all this foundation, right? You built all this information that you stored. Now the information, the, the ideas that you thought of yourself are now removed. Okay. And now it's like, damn, how do I get this information back? And all your life, you go through and you try to refill that hard drive with the information that you have stored once upon a time. That's what trauma is to me. Like trauma to me is like a girl getting raped and now now she don't like niggas anymore. But if she made peace with it, she it's not traumatic. Exactly. Mm, I don't know because it, tra- trauma is based on how you respond to that situation. But the experience is still traumatic though. The experience the experience is the experience. Trauma is the response. No, I get. I'm following you. I know what you're saying. But so if you've been shot before, right? right? I still think it's traumatic. It don't bother me. What What I'm saying is, if you get shot again, let's pray that you don't. Yeah, cause too many too many rappers dying. You know what I'm saying? Keep black dude alive, man, for real. Just for a little bit. Well, if you get shot again, or it's not gonna be the same. You're not gonna have the same outlook. You know, uh, like, oh, I, I got shot. It's yeah, not gonna be. Tra- it's not gonna. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be as traumatic. It's not gonna be as like. You know what I'm saying? It all depends on because. It depends. It all depends on how like what's the what's the damage out there because. 
the damage after depends on the internal stress response that you have. So say, say like an iPhone, right? It gets overheated. You know how iPhones get overheated? Yeah. Its stress response determines how that iPhone will work after it's finished overheating. So if it overheats, right, and it gives you that message and you turn it off, right. it's not gonna the, the damage isn't gonna be as bad okay. as if it keeps being in the sun, doesn't get any cool air, and it's still in the heat. Okay. The the I'm iPhone is gonna to be the damaged. Heat, that's the trauma. Exactly. Okay. Not that I not the heat is not the trauma. The trauma is the effects the response, of the, the response. Of the phone. Yeah. Which, and if you don't have any any um any cool air to come in, which is the ideas that you have that I will get through this. This is okay. just an experience. This is this. You you know what I'm saying? This yeah. ideas that you like as men, we all been down on our ass. Yeah. But strong men have that response to where, oh, it's not going to last that long. That's what's supposed to make you a man. Exactly. Yeah. So, this really started with, like, you know, um, women and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, but I think women and, women and men are, are, are different. And, and, okay, this is what I wanted to ask. This would be, like, last question and shit, right? And okay. we can, you know what I'm saying, of course, talk about music. But I seen an interview that Charleston White did, right? Okay, here we go. And what he was talking about was the fact that men at a young age are damaged. And that's why he feels like we need multiple women in our life. Because we're damaged in a way. We see porn, we watch porn, we watch other people with a, a whole but bunch of women. women in what way? Sexually. Uh, I don't even say sexually, but I feel like that could be a coping mechanism, but that shit sound kind of psychotic in a way. Like, I love pussy, but I don't love it because, like, I'm damaged. Like, But, okay, let me say, let me say this, right? If we grew up in a society to where we didn't see porn because, you know, when, when we was growing up, like, porn was just getting on on the internet. Like, yeah. Pornhub and X and XX and all that yeah. shit was just starting, just popping up. Now it's like, you know, it's rampant, you feel me? Yeah. But imagine if we didn't have that. Imagine if we, we still believed in love. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Pe- Men still because okay, I only say so, it like this. So you don't think you don't think niggas believe in love? No. So you think even if you get married to a girl, you still don't believe in it? No, I think men believe. Okay, this is what I think. Men don't prioritize love. Some niggas do. I did. Okay, and the reason why this was. Are you trying to say that that's why they damaged because they prioritize love? Are they prioritized love because they lack this somewhere else? No, I'm saying they're damaged because now that they see this imagery of porn and they see other people with multiple women, that's what they want now. You oh, know what no, I'm saying? I they're damaged know. by the porn and damaged by certain shit. So now they they want... like It's like when you have sex with a girl that you're not in love with, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It... it, it what you start to look for is is new new women. Like new women okay. is what excites you. You know what I'm right. saying? Everybody know that a new pussy. Yeah. A bitch can a bitch cannot even be that bad. But the experience new. of like the excitement of like oh yeah, I yeah. Don't, the, I just this is the first time I'm about to fuck this bitch. Is you know what I'm saying? That yeah. is exhilarating. That shit is a different. It's a difference. It's a different feeling. You might nut quick as a bitch. Just off the just off the because it was new. Just cause it was new, shit probably ain't even no good shit. It's probably not even no good shit. But it's just new. It's just new. You like, damn, this is, oh shit, I can't believe this bitch is sucking my dick right now. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, it's just it's just new. It's not it's not like yeah, that new shit definitely be different though. It'd be different, It'd but be what? Different. I, exactly, but what I'm trying to say is right. A lot of our first, 
a lot of our first sexual partners are not girls that we're in love with. So that's what we that's what we look to. We look to have the newness. The newness is the love instead of actually being in love with the girl that we have sex with. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So now that the newness is the love, we always crave that. Okay. Wow. When we do find, even when we do find a girl that we love, we always crave the newness. You don't think that the first person you had sex with, you was in love with? No. Do you do you think the act of doing that the first time made you in love with that person? No. Okay. At all. Not at all. So the first person that you had sex with, you ain't never like, as a young dude, like just want to be with that girl, like the first person, like. No, I remember vividly because I lost my virginity at eighteen. At 18. Oh, see, well, that's different. I lost mine at thirteen, so it's like. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like I, I was stuck. <laughs> I was stuck. Yeah. yeah like that's. But my you don't know what stuff. love like, is when you're young, so you get stuck on anything that. You know what I'm saying? That shows you inches. Love is a whole different level of deepness. Okay, but is it subjective though? Because love is what love is at 13. Like, you feel me? Um, you get it no. Like, I think because I think because you do you do you do still have some doubts when you're 13. You might not be want to be around this person 24 seven. I'm saying like when I was younger. If I if I was dating somebody when I was younger, just because I'm grown now and know what love is now, when I was younger, that's what love was. You know how people be like, you be like, Dad, I think I love her. Dad, your dad be like, nigga, you ain't even, you ain't you don't know what love is. Like, yeah, but couldn't nobody at that point in time tell you that you didn't love that person. You feel me? Because that what love was to you. Oh, uh, I think I think no, I think only you know what true love is. But isn't it if you gotta say if you gotta go up to your dad and be like, "Dad, I think I love them," then you don't love them. You think so? I know so. But is that only because you older and know what? You feel me? Because love. This is the thing. You love love, love doesn't have doubt. You say what? Love doesn't have doubt. Like, you look at this person, love is, you look at this person, and no matter what the fuck you think, you cannot get off of the fact that you love them. There's, there's no other alternative. You love them, and it's not, even, it's not even up to you. It's not something that you can, can control. It's, it's not up to you. You look at this person, and you be like, dang, I love them, and nothing, no force can can keep a uh, force so can keep you away saying, from this person unconditional i'm saying it's out of your control yes yeah, so that's unconditional love you can't control it but who yeah who exactly but just because it's not unconditional that don't mean it ain't real because i feel like i feel like if you was really with somebody heavy when you was younger and you love that person because you, you you've been young and told somebody you loved them when you was young. You can't tell me you didn't. I have. Okay, so at that point in time when you was that age and you was in a relationship and you loved somebody, I feel like with, at whatever age you was at, you would do the most you could do at that age for that person. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So it's as, like as a duty. Can't yeah, but can't as nobody tell you. That's what I'm saying. And go back to saying, like, when you was younger and you had a girlfriend, couldn't nobody tell you that you didn't love that person. So I can't say that just because it's not the way an older me views love that it won't love. Because, like, I would be telling my older self the same shit. Like, no, nah, Dre, you love. I got, like, if that's like, that's like saying, like, you had a girlfriend, right? And your ass went in the past and was like, you not gonna like this bitch. This bitch ain't all that. You ain't. You won't never. You was never. You don't love her. Trust me. I'm telling you. You don't love her. You not hearing that shit because you as that age. You not. You not hearing that shit. Maybe not because it's not true, but maybe because your arrogance. You know, as, as kids, we think we know everything. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So we think we we think we know everything. 
You know what I'm saying? I told I told a couple girls I loved them before I actually knew what fucking love was. Right, but does it I make always you not had love the them? doubt though. I always had it was always in the back of my mind like it was always in the back of my mind like do I really love this person? Like why don't I want to be around them all the time? They kind of fucking annoy me. Like I was talking to you about this off air, bro. Like I was with this girl from like when I was 13, we dated like five years. So we broke up when I was 18. Like 17, I was already had tattoos. I had my finger tattoos, my arm. I had my other arm and shit like that. So I was wilding. I thought I loved the bitch. Like I told her mama all that shit. Like when we was younger, I was like, bro, I'm about to get a tattoo. She was like, well, my daughter ain't gonna do it. So I was like, okay, cool. I still did it. And you know what I'm saying? like. I don't know. You feel me? It's like, I think... I'm not going to say your situation wasn't love. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like if 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 it, it's such a draw to this person that pretty much nothing can get you away from thinking about this yeah, person. Yeah, but I don't love this person no more. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't... Like like you said, you said it love... It doesn't linger a little bit? No. You feel me? And that's what I'm saying. It's like, you when you kind of say like... Love got to be unconditional and shit. I feel like it don't because I feel like in different parts of your life, you view love a different way. And I just be, I don't think, I don't feel like because this age in your life, this love come with this precursors, that it's not love in a different age in life. Because at when you 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, let's just say you going through school, your value and your perspective of love is different. So just because it's not what your adult mind thinks of love is, that don't mean that back in that time you won't in love. Even if you might say, oh, that shit won't mature or you don't, you won't think in with your head yet, it don't matter. It's like that shit still. So what's your definition of being in love? Like, how would you describe it? I feel like can't nobody explain that shit. I disagree with that totally. I don't, because I don't, bro, because... Love is so subjective, bro. Like, just the way people love people like... Uh, you know what? It's funny that you say that, right? Because I always get people that haven't been in love. Tell me that. Like, oh, dang. I see trying to... Uh, I don't know, gang. It's just like... You know what's funny? I was talking to a girl. Okay. It was a girl that I was talking to, right, for okay. a long time. And she was telling me about people that she loved. And she was describing... How she loved, I told her, you, you haven't been in love before. She was like, how can you tell me that I haven't been in love before? How can you, like... I was like, because you, you just haven't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the way you're describing it is not how... That's not how it goes. It's like, but love... Love has so many different meanings with other people. I mean, different people. And, you know what I'm saying? Your version of love is may, maybe not my version of love. Right? Yeah. Then and uh, even though we was talking, right? You know, we on and off some, like you know, we built a we built a peculiar relationship to where like you know she went off and did her thing and I was doing my thing and shit. And she met a guy that she fell in love with, and she told she came and told me she said everything you were saying makes sense. Everything you were saying makes sense now because I had never felt that before. She never felt that even for me. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is a lot of people think they've been in love before, but haven't. Love is not a subjection. It's a, Frank Ocean had a letter to where... Yeah, the one for Color Orange. Color, yeah, yeah, Channel, Channel Orange. Orange. He had a letter, and it, basically the way he described it was falling from a plane. And not and not being able to do anything about when you're falling, right? And that's what it is because it is at that point it is out of your control. So whether now you can make decisions, you can control your decisions based on it, but the the feelings that you feel they are not in your control. Love is doubtless. Love is when you see this person, you like everything they do. You like the way they, you like their jokes. You like, <laughs> you like the little imperfections they have. Okay. You, 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 y'all have the same, I, I mean, y'all have the same music like choices or not even maybe the same music choices, but. No, nah, cause I ain't gonna lie. 
the shit I be listening to don't know, don't know bit like that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. So I at least in my case, me and her had the same favorite rapper. Okay. Same music choices. Every song I played, she knew. I was like, damn, how the fuck you know that? Right. She's like, I love this song. I was like, damn, I love this song too. No, but don't you not like that shit though? I loved it. No, I ain't gonna lie, cause like sometimes, bro, I be like, man, I know a nigga put you on this shit. Like when I start talking to like a new bit, and like I be like. Yeah, I know about this anime. Nah, it was, it was funny. It wasn't. Music. It wasn't no nigga song though. Oh, okay, okay. It was the. Uh, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna lose you. I don't know that. Yeah. Well, that shit a banger, nigga. Oh, man. It's Megan Trainor, um, and John Legend. Okay, okay. So, yeah, she knew that shit. And I was like, damn. Like we just had the same music taste. Like it was. Right, it was. Right, it was right. weird. It was weird as fuck. And then when she realizes, like, no escaping it. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people going through relationships and they thinking they've been in love when they really haven't. I'm not saying that's not your, not your, that's your case. But, you know, I think that's a big thing for people because when I was, when I was in love with her, I would fuck other girls. I would, I would, I would literally fuck other girls and then talk to the girl about the girl I was in love with. Yeah, man. Oh, you getting crazy now. This nigga telling, turning to Steve Harvey for wait a minute. Well, I'm saying like nah, that know, connection. Saying- that connection is better than sex. <laughs> when you look, a gr- love is love. This is what love is. How you and feel then, about the girls the that that are like since you want to really go down that, that rabbit hole? How you feel about the girls that 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 like that let you do that? Let me do what exactly? Like. It be those girls that know you got like a girlfriend or like know you dealing with somebody else, but like a fuck you come hang with you and then like talk to you about the other bitch like on some therapeutic shit. I I mean shit, I'm cool with it. I'm saying, but that shit be crazy because then like you be wondering like, damn, why ain't I just fucking with this? (laughs) You know, that's a good, that's a good question. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes some things that, some puzzle pieces just don't match up. So like no, the girl don't. I was talking, the girl I was talking to about it, right? She had a she had a great soul. Like I still yeah. fuck with her as a person to this day. Like me and her don't talk often, but you know, like we we share certain things that we'll never tell anybody. You right. know what I mean? And for that, you know, I appreciate her. But I think on the attractive uh, attraction scale, she just wasn't that. She wasn't like. I didn't hold her up high on the attraction. So even though she had the personality okay. to maybe be a girlfriend, the I wasn't immensely attracted to her. I was attracted to her, of course, because I was fucking her. Right. But I wasn't immensely attracted to her. Like, damn, this is like, wow. Yeah, I could feel that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. So we haven't really talked about music. Okay. We just did a music video yesterday. Um, yeah, we did. Let us know what exactly you know you're doing in Virginia and what's your next move. Me- next moves. Uh, so man, I know every time I talk on the camera somewhere, I be telling niggas what I'm doing. But uh, I just uh, did three music videos. Um, this is my second interview. Um, I did a photo shoot. You feel me? And um, yeah, man, I just been in the studio, man. Uh, ABS 1.2 coming out next two weeks and then november man november beginning of december abs volume two coming out you know what i'm saying so it's just a whole lot of work going on a whole lot of content being posted uh i got a podcast with we got 59 seconds left so i got a podcast with locally famous coming out uh i just did a podcast with uh local legends um, crazy they named both local, you know what I'm saying? But that's coming out. Just a whole lot of work, man. You know, I can't tell y'all everything, but you know, like I said, ABS Volume Two coming soon. Get ready to stream that Count Up the Dead music video coming soon. Time Flies music video coming soon. I got like ten music videos. I could do this shit till time run out, man. But yes, sir. And there we go. Gravity Films. Blacko. Blacko. You did. And we out. Hey, hey, hey. Ah! <laughs> that was hard. Yeah.
they're gonna be like, damn, these niggas forgot this. 